Greetings everybody and welcome back to Hot Bar Survival. My name is Sliced Lime and I am the unfortunate victim of this inventory restricting experiment. Last time we dug and dug and dug a massive chasm under our shaking floor mob farm design. And it's yet to be fully tested though. Today we need to set up the mechanisms for collecting loot. Since we don't have hoppers this is going to be a bit of a challenge. The first order of business is to get some ice. Here we go. That's perfect. It's all frozen over. Woo! So much fun. That gives us exactly a stack. So we shall need more. There we go. I need another 36 of these. So we'll go back and we'll come back at a... <laughs> or we'll just harvest this ice. How about that? That works. <laughs> works to me. It's quite funny. Not sure it's going to be enough, but it might be almost enough. It is actually enough. <laughs> uh, that is funny. I do, however, think that I need more than the floor. Now that I think of it, I need some ice for a tr uh, path that leads into the item elevator. So we'll probably need a few more. We need 36. This is more than that. This is 15 more. So yeah, that'll probably do. <laughs> that was funny. Completely wrecked that water, but it's fine. Let's head on to our tower. We got a spider jockey. That's pretty cool. And what's that? That was potion effect or something? The somewhat worrying part, though, is that we still have not gotten any Enderman. I wonder if the spider's gonna climb on the wall forever. <laughs> the spider's climbing and suffocating the rider. Nice. Uh, I made a bit of a mistake there, placed an additional... Uh, ice blocks. I'm gonna have to go and get my silk touch pick to fix that up. Um, then we need a bunch of pistons to control a water sources and stuff like that, so we have a bit of work to do. Now I need to put water sources behind here and the interesting thing is I don't have two water buckets, but check this out. Tiny little dripping here, so I should be able to find a water source here somewhere, but Anyway, what we're gonna do is we put water here, let's see, put in water here and then close the water in. And then we're gonna go hunting for that water source, which is there, or so I thought. That was a more, it's like a lake of water up there. Okay, that's fine though. We need to clear out this little bit. Okay. The best way to do this is probably to just swim up into this. I honestly should be lighting this stuff up anyway. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> this shaking like this isn't doing the trick most of the time. So, um, one of the next steps is going to be fixing up a clock to drive this whole shaking and then we're gonna um, hook that up to something that can turn it on and off so that we can have it shaking 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 fall having mobs fall through the floor land down here whoa <laughs> nearly fell down onto it myself there um, get the look down here then we're gonna have pistons here uh, extended and that will retract causing all of this to flow over as we stop the shaking up there and then it's obviously all gonna end up here and then it should we should be able to lower the floor one get another uh, water stream going this way and uh, yeah fix it all up that way but it just occurred to me this is not gonna reach all the way across 
it's only going to reach to here. So we should probably lower this floor one more, which means I need to take all of this up, which is a problem because I have, well, I have enough durability on this to do that. But yeah, fun times. Uh, first of all, though, I'm going to hook up the shaker so that uh, I can get that working automatically. All right, so after a bit of tinkering here, I came up with this. This is just a four repeater circuit that has a one tick pulse spinning around in it and it's connected to this whole thing and there are now two repeaters here here set to one tick instead of two one with two ticks so that we get as quick a shake as possible you can see that it's stationary right now and it's because i have this disable switch here uh, so switching it on or rather switching that lever off makes the whole thing shake so that is that this is then where we will feed in a signal to pulse the whole thing uh, when we want to pour water over stuff down there so that we can collect all the loot. That's how it's gonna work. The problem we have remaining now is to get a long enough clock so that we get a, uh, a large amount of shaking going then stop it for a long time and collect long enough time to collect the things down there. Uh, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is put away all this redstone stuff up there and then I'm gonna grab my silk touch pick and dig up some of that. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the water streams can carry the items all the way across. Uh, so to do that I have too many things. Yeah, so let's switch it on while we're down there, I guess. Not the greatest of frame rates here, but yeah. Okay, once I get down, it should get better. It does. <laughs> Gets a lot better. Okay. Ah, yes. That is so glitchy. That is so glitched out. Okay, well, whatever. We are going to use you as a measurement. Is that, a, that is a redstone ore under there that I haven't seen. Oh my goodness. Ooh, that could be a problem. That is a problem. Um, I can't replace this with ice. Dang it. Um, this may be more complicated than I originally envisioned then. Or we just let it flow th slowly across there. Hmm. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna put this back and then I'm gonna go th think this through. Ah. <sighs> Well, let me show you a pleasant surprise. I have been trying to light this place up because, well, I still haven't figured out what to do about the other thing. So, I saw these redstone blocks up here. I figured I can go up here and light this place. Why not? And then I went over here and started filling in here and check this out. That is a welcome sight indeed. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to try to isolate these and then We'll dig them up. We'll probably use the silk touch here, and then we'll use the fortune when we get up there. Oh, it's more than two! Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So good. Okay, let's do it. It's one, two, three, and four. It's only four. That's okay. Ah, <sighs> four diamond ore. It's going to give me a nice amount of diamond with Fortune 3, I believe. So let's head on up to do that. Oh yeah, I also got some mobs falling down here while I was <laughs> while I was down here and scared the life out of me. Uh, I was not ready for that. Alright, we're just going to use this one. It's Fortune 3. Here we go. Ooh, 11 diamonds. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Then we can, let's see, we have a chest plate. We have boots. We can repair, one, two, three, repair the pick. It's going to be needed. And we have a sword. And we have eight left, so that is enough for um, them. Leggings, and to have one spare. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's go do those right away 
and let's store them. Can we place these? They can go over here, maybe. And yeah, uh, probably put the spare diamond there. So I really don't want to lose that in this mess. I had a one lock here. That is the one I want. Let's put the arrows away. Whew. That's such a great find. I'm super happy about that. Do this. And I'm going to do the repair. It's going to be super expensive, I'm sure, but it's going to be worth it. This is a really good pick. Silk touch efficiency 4. So yeah. That's not so expensive at all. Maybe I should put some unbreaking or something onto this first. Fortune 1. I'm breaking one. Uh, I have a book. Feather Falling 4. Oh. oh, did I throw out the other books? Oh, whatever. Uh, scrap the lapis. And just put Unbreaking 1 onto this. And then combine those. This costs four, but we get an unbreaking one onto it. This is going to be more expensive. Yes. Let's do that. It's great. Whew. Uh, that was a great find. And now actually back to the kind of situation where this thing is really the only one I need. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? Okay, right click, <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is gonna last a long time. Put it there, ah, and a diamond. So now I have these two to enchant, so I'm gonna have to get levels, uh, but we'll finish with this first and then next time is probably level hunting time. Now actually, here's a thing. I've been experimenting around a whole bunch with stuff and I've come to the conclusion that I there's just no way around sticky pistons. I need sticky pistons. I'm gonna go hunting for slime and I'm gonna do it on the surface. I don't want to be digging around trying to find a slime chunk. I'm just gonna go try to find a swamp. Alright folks, I've been at this for quite a while and I've, what I needed to do was build a long period clock and I don't have the standard kind of components, the hoppers, the droppers and stuff. And I certainly don't want to make too many redstone repeaters, so I've based this around lava, you'll see it here in a second. And yeah. So this is a bud switch, it's a block update detector and to be specific it's a T-bud. Uh, this sticky piston here. That's what I needed the slime balls for. That's powered through this 
block, which is diagonally above it, which means it doesn't directly update when this changes state. So now that this went out, it powered this thing, which unpowered this thing. And then what we do is we have a piston up here. And if we see if we can follow this without getting hurt, this actually blocks off a lava stream. And now you saw a change and then the lava starts slowly pouring. The lava updates pretty slowly in the overworld, right? That's what I based this on. So once it slowly trickles all the way down here again, then it's going to update this piston here again as it comes down and this will turn out. The period of this is about half a minute for it to turn on and then half no another half a minute for it to turn off. It's about 33, 34 seconds, something like that. Uh, so that's pretty good, I think. The thing we need to do now is we need to hook that up to block off this and that will mean that in one state, which is very easy to do by the way, it's just hooking it this here. We're gonna remove see this and then hook it up to this. That's kind of annoying, but we'll see once the switch is here in a second. There. That stops the shaking. And it stops the shaking in a mode where all the floor tiles are are in, so to speak. Uh, if these pistons were be, to be the ones that we uh, lock in, then you would see through it, it would leak light up into here. Uh, so if we switch this off now, we're gonna have shaking for maybe half a minute, and then it's gonna turn off. Now what we need to do next is, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Um, we need to send this redstone signal down, send it downwards, all the way down to our floor down there, so that when that happens we need to turn this on so that it releases the water. Uh, so we only want the water to be out when this shaking is off, right? So mobs can fall, die, then we release the water, all the it's actually fairly quick. Is that actually half a minute? I guess it is. I did measure it. But yeah, once the water is out, then the items flow up and we want them to end up right here. This is 142, 246, 48, whatever. I have that on a screenshot somewhere, so I know where it is. And yeah, this place is going to be laggy, but it's also going to be laggy uh, far enough away that Ooh, I almost fell there. So yeah, this is what I ended up doing down here. Uh, I've put pistons in place that hold the water back. Again, we don't have droppers, uh, dispensers, so we can't use them. And the water's gonna reach here. And the reason they're heightened one here is then we get one extra length. They reach down here. Some of these uh, are not going to be ice. We're just gonna have to live with it. And then here's the next problem. I need to push them this way. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> it's something I'll need to do. But essentially, if we do this, we're gonna get water there, water there, and then it covers the whole thing. What I'm thinking is potentially to separate this one. Oh, dang it. That one acts as a bud. <laughs> or why is it powered? There we go. Uh, because what happens then is that the water spreads from down there and actually reaches at least halfway through. That or we open up uh, first a slot here and then one over here or something. Uh, we'll, we'll need to figure that one out. Whew, all right, <laughs> we have a bunch of wiring here and it's not all that we need but it's enough to show you how it's going to work. What it's going to be is we're going to open all the pistons first that gives us a nice and even flow down there then we're going to close then we're going to close all of them have all the water drain and then open this one only that puts items 
that were anywhere here, they're going to flow over to at least that middle block there. And then we're going to open this one. Doesn't matter, that one can still stay open. But we're going to open this one, and that pushes everything all the way down to the corner. And actually... No, exactly to this corner. Um, yeah, here we still have a problem. With that, we can deal with. All right, here we are. We're testing out another piece of the puzzle. Ah, uh, yes. So, I can use this armor stand floating back and forth here. Hey, look, armor stands in survival. <laughs> in a redstone contraption. Ain't that magic. Uh, so, we can use that, and then in certain places along the way here, we can put these tripwire hooks to get signals that we can use for timing. So, if I go here, and we do the same thing to this piston. There. Now you can see water disappears. And if I go here and drop that, we get click, click. And the armor stand floats all the way over here again. Awesome. And then, of course, turn that on. So it closes off that water stream and then this push it all the way back. So now we have a bunch of state wiring to do on this side so that we can drive the correct ones of these when the correct thing here turns on, which will be fun. Ah, so it's now much, much later. This has taken quite a while, but it's looking pretty good now. I've thrown some items across here and the process is going pretty well. And then all the items end up down in the corner. So now all we need is an item elevator.
Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally done. So much effort. Way up there. The floor is shaking around. You can see it kind of glitching around there. And the timer is running up there with the lava. And eventually it's going to stop. And then as that stops, we'll see it comes down here. That thing starts going. Water flows out. Gets pushed down there. Water from there. Pushes all the items over to the center at least. And then the final push pushes them all in there and they're going to flow around into the item elevator which is through there through the cobble and then end up at my doorstep which is pretty damn cool um redstone line comes down here it's just a whole bunch of torches and dust this incurs a slight delay you can see it blinking down there and that is actually absolutely fine it's pretty much desirable because we want the last mobs that have shook through uh, to fall all the way down and die before the water gets released. Uh, it's connected up to this. This is a pulse limiter and then that turns this little memory circuit on which opens this gate and then once the armor stand there comes and crosses this line then this little circuit switches on which opens this and then sends it back, switching this one off, and then it eventually switches itself back. There you can see. So that's how it works, and well, I am very happy that this is now done. It has taken so, so long to record this. I'm sure it will take ages to edit. I'm going to do a few time lapses and stuff here too, so that's why this episode has taken a long time to get out, and I'm sorry for that. It also does lag a bit, but that will be fine. We do need those pearls. We'll see if we get any pearls. Let's go all the way up here and get our pieces of stone back. Yay! <laughs> so that is it. Next time we need to get levels. I went ahead and put the Feather Falling 4 book that I had onto my boots. So the boots are pretty much done now. We need to enchant the chest plate, these pants. And we need a bit more diamond. We have one diamond left. We need a bit more to make a helmet and then we're fully decked. And then we need the experience to enchant those, of course, and this thing is not terribly effective. The mob system I've built it, you know, pops up a few things at a time sometimes, but maybe we will take the opportunity to go light up some of the caves around here to both get some levels from killing stuff and then maybe find some diamonds and also increase the effectiveness of the system. But that is definitely enough for one time. Thank you so much for being with me for another episode of Hotbar Survival. My name is Sliceline, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.